Praise the Lord. Uh, welcome everyone to class. Thank you online students for um, joining class this morning. And we welcome all our e-learning students who will be listening to this lecture later on. And also welcome to our in-person students. Um, we'll be studying chapter 5 in the publication uh, Kingdom of God. So I hope you're learning some things from the Kingdom of God and it's helpful. And you're putting into practice what we are learning. Okay, this is just not a course that we are studying, but something more practical that we can apply in our lives. Okay, so before we um, look at chapter five, we started uh, studying chapter five uh, last um, Wednesday. We uh, looked at pages 51 and 52. So we'll continue from uh, uh, page number 52 onwards. So before that, can any one of you please lead us in prayer? Anyone? Who has the mic? Any online student, you can please unmute your mics and pray. Please, anyone? Esther Clement, can you lead us in prayer, please? Okay, Miriam, go ahead. Let's pray. Loving Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to give you thanks this morning. We want to say thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Abba Father, for the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that you are investing in our lives this great morning. Father, we want to surrender this day unto you, and we surrender all that we are going to learn unto you. We pray that you be with us, O God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Miriam. Good to hear your voice. Uh, we hardly get to hear uh, uh, most the students' voices on online, but it's good to hear your voice this morning. Thank you. Okay, so uh, we are looking at uh, chapter 5. We'll be studying chapter 5 from page number 52. Um, so we uh, said that the kingdom of God, where is the kingdom of God? It's within us, yes. And so everywhere we go, the kingdom of God, uh, you know, is uh, it goes... Uh, because wherever we are is where the kingdom of God is. So the kingdom of God is there wherever we go. It is within us. We are carrying the kingdom of God. We carry the authority. We carry all of the authority. We carry all of the life. We carry all of the dominion of the king inside us. And all of the life, authority, dominion, and the power of the king that is within us is then taken wherever we go, okay? So we are talking about kingdom lifestyle, and we said that kingdom lifestyle is also in the same way. The kingdom lifestyle is an outworking of what is happening inside us, okay? The work of God, the work of the Spirit of God inside our lives, uh, the outworking of that is seen in our lifestyle. Okay, so the kingdom of God that is within us affects our lifestyle, it affects um, our world, it affects the area where we live in, our home, our family, everything concerning us. Okay, and it, it affects the way we live. We also looked at what are the characteristics of kingdom lifestyle. What is the characteristics of kingdom lifestyle? Holiness. Holiness. Sorry, childlikeness, okay, holiness, humility, servanthood, okay, righteousness, righteousness. Yes. yes, righteousness, peace, joy, okay, what else? The no, not so nice part of it, <laughs> huh? suffering, yes, persecution, okay. Endurance. What are the other nice aspects of the kingdom of God? Lifestyle. Important aspects of the kingdom of God lifestyle. Extending forgiveness, okay? Power, authority, and dominion, okay? So we look at uh, all of these uh, in a little bit. Yes, thank you, Lucy. Love and faithfulness, handling rejection. Um, uh, thank you, Clem uh, Esther. I, I, I read your um, uh, comment. Uh, it's okay. I understand your mic is not working. Okay. 
so these are the characteristics of the kingdom lifestyle that we just mentioned. Righteousness, peace, joy, holiness, reverence, power, authority, uh, dominion, forgiveness, stewardship, um, um, you know, suffering, persecution, so all of those things, okay? So we look at, at uh, all of that in a little bit. Um, we also saw last week, we read 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 14 to 18, and um, we, um, we saw that, you know, that since we be uh, belong to the kingdom of God, the king, we are not part of the kingdom of this world. Okay, so because we belong to a kingdom of God where we are made righteous and holy, we have no fellowship with unrighteousness. Okay, so we'll um, continue our study. Uh, can someone please read John chapter 3, verses 19 to 21, please? John chapter 3, verses 19 to 21. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but men love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly that what he has done has been done through God. Amen. Thank you. So here it says, whoever practices evil, they don't like what? They don't like the light. Why don't they like the light? Because their own sinful deeds or their lifestyles will be exposed. But he who does the truth, what does he like? People who live the truth, who do the truth, what do they like? They like the light, yes, because their deeds can be clearly seen uh, that whatever they're doing, they're doing according to what God wants them to do. So what uh, John is saying here is that men love darkness rather than light, and they prefer staying in the darkness so that their own deeds are not exposed. So what's the point here? The point here is that the world around us enjoys darkness or they prefer darkness, and they prefer doing things in that darkness, okay? But you and I, as people of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, okay, and as the kingdom of God is amongst us, you know, we uh, do things that are honoring, that are holy, that are pleasing in God's sight, okay? And because we belong to the kingdom of God, we are children of God, we are children of the light, okay? Jesus said we are salt and light, yes? Okay, so when we as people who belong to the kingdom of God are living in this world where there is darkness, if people don't see the light, if they don't see the difference that is in our lives, in our family, the way we live our lives, the way we walk, talk, and the way we do things, then we must question ourselves. Are we really living like we belong to the kingdom of God, or we are living like, you know, people of this world, okay? So if you are living the way God wants us to live, you know, then we are belonging to the kingdom of God, and we are able to be salt and light here in this darkness, in this world. And when people see us, they are able to see the kingdom of God. They are able to see God, who is the king of this kingdom, okay? So here clearly God is saying that, you know, we are light and we have no fellowship with darkness, okay? So um, that is why he wants us to live in holiness and reverence because we belong to a kingdom where holiness is the standard, where holiness is the core foundation. God is holy and he wants us to be holy. That is a standard that he has set for us. Yes, we live in this world. We relate to people in this world. We work along with people in this world. But in the process, you know, if we end up losing our light, if we don't be salt and light, and we end up, that means compromising according to the way of this world, then we are not doing things that are pleasing to the 
father okay we are not living kingdom values we are not living kingdom lifestyle we are not living kingdom culture and we are not manifesting kingdom thinking okay so we need to look at our lives and check our lives and see if our lives are being if we are being sold and light here in this dark world okay so uh, paul is very clear about this when he writes his epistle to the church at Corinth, to the church at Galatia, and the church at Ephesus. So look at what he says in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, and also Galatians 5, 19 to 21, and Ephesians chapter 5, verses 3 to 5. So here in these, in the scripture passages, you know, he's writing to whom? He's writing to the church and he's writing to the saints he's writing to the believers and paul is very clearly indicating that a sinful lifestyle is unacceptable before god okay and that sinful lifestyle will prevent you know us from experiencing the kingdom of god in its fullness and also will prevent us from uh, you know spreading the kingdom of god here on the Earth. We said the kingdom of God is within us. Wherever we go, we carry the kingdom of God. So if we are not carriers of the kingdom of God, we are living like this world. We are basically carrying the kingdom of this world. Okay. So look at what uh, he is uh, very strongly talks about his understanding of the kingdom of God and who will inherit the kingdom of God. So in these three passages, he's basically telling us who will inherit the kingdom of God. God. So can someone please read 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 9 and 10 please. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, nor adulteries, nor hom homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners, extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. So he's very, very, you know, um, uh, 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 strongly saying that here, listen, don't fool yourselves. Okay. If you continue in unrighteousness, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Okay. If you are involved in idolatry, okay, all of you might say, hey, we don't worship idols. But you know what is an idol, right? Anything that takes the place of God in your life it can be a person it can be your work it can be money love for money it can be love for things of this world anything that can become an idol in your life anything that takes the place of god look at this it says no adulterers homosexuals sodomites thieves you know covetous people covetous means always desiring what others have and want Okay, drunkards, revelers, extortioners will not in inherit the kingdom of God. Look at what he says in Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21. He lists out several things there that he calls out as the works of the flesh. So can someone read that please? Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, and heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the time past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Yes. So even if you're having an unclean spirit and an unclean mind, thinking unclean thoughts, you know, there's, uh, you know, uh, vulgarity in the way you speak, you know, uh, filthiness in the way you speak and the, the thoughts that you think, you know, he says again, hatred, look at that, hatred, jealousies, you know, some of us outbursts of wrath and anger, when we get angry, you know, we can become very, very, uh, you know, there can be uh, the way that we um, portray our anger, outbursts of anger can be really, uh, you know, mind blowing, uh, you know, selfish ambitions that we have causing divisions, you know, drunkenness, murder, envy, envying other people. All of this, he says, if you have this, if you practice this, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. So some of us think that, hey, you know, if only if we uh, worship idols, if we, uh, you know, murder people 
or we do something really the so called bad sins you know we will not uh, belong to the kingdom of god but here he says even uncleanliness rudeness you know um he says uh, outbursts of wrath jealousy selfish ambition you know he says uh, if you practice all of these things or you have all of these things you will not inherit the kingdom of god and the same thing he repeats in ephesians chapter 5 verses 3 to 5 so can somebody read that please this is ephesians chapter 5 3 to 5 but fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be even be named among you as it is fitting for saints neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse jesting which are not fitting but rather giving of thanks for this you know but that no fornicator and clean person no covetous man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God amen thank you so what is paul basically saying here he's telling the believers you know i know you are saved by grace through faith and it's not by works but he's saying that you must have good works or you must live a holy life to show that you are saved okay so paul uh, he, he knows what these people will be thinking in their minds he'll be saying hey we are saved by grace through faith and it's not by works but paul is saying hey you must have good works or you must live a holy life to show that you are saved how will people of this world know that you belong to the kingdom of god or your salt or light is by your fruits is by the way that you live your lifestyle your culture okay so he's saying i'm telling you you cannot practice these things because it's not part of kingdom living because those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of god so here we see that salvation and sanctification go to together okay uh, salvation affects sanctification in the life of the individual what is sanctification yes being holy set a, set apart set aside for you know god so he salvation and sanctification go together and salvation affects sanctification in the life of the individual okay so uh, talking about the grace of god uh, look at what the writer of hebrews says in hebrews chapter 11 verse 28 can somebody please read that hebrews, hebrews 12, 12 28, 28. therefore since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken let us have grace by which we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear amen so he says let us have grace okay so the literal meaning is let us appropriate or let us receive the grace by which we serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear so what paul is saying here he's saying the literal meaning is you know let us appropriate let us receive the grace by which we may serve god acceptably with reverence and godly fear okay so paul is saying here we've been called he, here you know with this kingdom so let us appropriate that grace so what will the grace do even as we are part of the kingdom of god the grace of god in connection with the kingdom of god will lead you into reverence and godly fear not in the other way round it will not lead you to uncleanliness filthiness and ungodly living and lifestyle but the the grace of god that is given to you because you belong to the kingdom of god leads you into reverence and godly fear okay so we are talking about receiving a grace that liberates us that gives us freedom that liberates us um, uh, you know not to uh, indulge in sex 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 full sorry not to indulge in sexual activity not to indulge in sinful things in gratifications of our sinful desire and not to be casual about sin but this grace is the kind of grace that comes from god and is that grace that is given to those who belong to the kingdom of god so that we can live a holy lifestyle okay so that we can live a life that is in reverence and godly fear okay so 
we need to keep this in mind, okay? Uh, because many of them think, hey, you know, we live, we are part of the kingdom of God. You know, the uh, uh, our actions doesn't really matter, okay? Because we are living by grace through faith, you know? So that is a misunderstanding and a misrepresentation of the true grace of God. We can't misrepresent or misunderstand the grace of God. The grace of God doesn't mean that we keep on sinning and, you know, God keeps on forgiving us. No, that is not what the grace of God means that when we are part of the kingdom of God, the grace of God that is uh, given to us because we belong to the kingdom of God leads us into living a life that is holy in godly fear and reverence to God. Okay. Because the grace of God will move you into a greater a level of reverence to God and godly fear okay you may have had a, a a certain amount of reverence or godly fear but the grace of god that is there that is given to you because you're part of the kingdom of god you know moves you into a greater level of reverence for god and godly fear okay so what about this grace uh, is it going to help you to develop kingdom lifestyle yes it's going to help you uh, to further uh, to deepen your walk, the way that you walk and the way that you talk in your actions, you know, to live a life that is holy and pleasing to God. Because if you look at First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12, it says that the grace of God leads us to walk worthy of God who has called us into his own kingdom and glory. So can somebody please read First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12, please? That you would walk worthy of God who calls you in, in, into his own kingdom and glory. Yes. Amen. So the grace of God leads you to do what? The grace of God leads you to do what? To walk worthy of the one who has called you into his own kingdom and his glory. Okay. So that is what we mean when we're talking about kingdom lifestyle of being holy and having reverence towards God. The second uh, or another uh, characteristic of kingdom lifestyle on page number 54 is righteousness, peace and joy. Okay. So can somebody please read Romans 14, 16 to 19, please. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Yeah, 18 and 19 also. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Therefore, let us per pursue the things which make for the for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Amen. So um, the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy in the holy spirit okay so for uh, for those of us who serve christ uh, in these things you know we are acceptable to god and we are approved by men so we need to pursue the things that make up for peace and the things that edify one another so that is what he's uh, he's uh, writing here um, in in romans he's saying you know um, those who serve christ in these things you know, they are acceptable to god and they are approved by men and so paul is saying in verse 19 therefore let us pursue the things which make up for peace and the things that edify one another so in romans chapter 14 verses 16 to 19 paul is basically addressing the subject of what you should eat and what you should not eat okay so in this chapter in chapter 14 you know and in this context paul makes several things um, or mentions several things and then finally he sums it up uh, in the way he says you know listen that at the end of the day the kingdom of god is not about what you eat and drink it's all about righteousness peace and uh, joy okay so what is righteousness right standing with god okay you're right also not just right standing with god when you have a right standing with god you also have a right living before men then they can see you know your right living it's also peace and joy that comes from the holy spirit and he says if you pursue these things you are acceptable by 
God and you will get the approval of man. That means you will be a light in this dark world. So the point is this, as a, as a kingdom person or as a person belonging to the kingdom of God, you and I must understand that we are called to pursue the higher things. Okay, not just what we eat, what we drink, what we wear, you know, we are called to pursue the higher things of righteousness, peace and joy. And even as we uh, are called to pursue these higher things, there will be a need for us to sacrifice. So sometimes we will have to sacrifice our legitimate rights of what we eat, what we drink in order to pursue righteousness, peace and joy. OK, um, because Paul says, you know, that in, in the context, he says, if I eat something in Romans chapter 14, in that context, he says, if I eat uh, something that causes my brother to stumble or causes his uh, his faith in God to stumble or weakens his faith in God, then I won't eat it. OK, why will I not eat it? Because the kingdom of God is all about righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit, because it's more important how I am to that brother than what I eat and drink. Okay, so he says, this is how the kingdom of God is. So what is he saying? He says, yes, we have some legitimate rights of what we can eat, uh, the way we can live, or, you know, what we can do, what we cannot do. You have those legitimate rights. But if you are pursuing the kingdom of God, then you will have to pursue what promotes righteousness, peace, and joy. Because that righteousness, peace, and joy will edify those who are around you and will extend the kingdom of God. So he says, this is how a kingdom person should live. Okay. So if, um, you know, if, um, uh, if my eating some things is going to hinder somebody else's faith, a, a, a brother who is new to the faith, or somebody who is in the uh, song of the faith and is going to weaken them, then I might as well not eat it. If my dressing a certain way is going to, you know, weaken some other person's faith, or my dressing when I come to church is going to cause distraction uh, to another believer, then I might as well dress up in a way that's orderly, that honors God, and is also that is honoring the, uh, the 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 setup and is not disturbing anyone okay so you are able to understand right so we have some legitimate rights of what we can eat and drink and where we can go what we can do what we can wear but if some of those things are going to become a stumbling block to others then i might as well not do it okay so for example when we go to north india you know, um, uh, and we preach in some of our APC churches, you know, they would want us to remove our footwear when we go to the altar. I know some of our mainline churches also here, they do it. So when we are called to preach in some of the mainline churches, we also remove our footwear. We don't say, hey, we don't do this at APC. So, you know, I have the legitimate right to, you know, do what I want. But if that is going to block me from or hinder me from sharing what God has laid on my heart and is going to stop somebody from receiving it, might as well leave the footwear outside. Okay. So at APC, we don't cover our head when we go up and minister and all of those things. But when we go to some of our APC churches, you know, or we are ministering in our short term Bible colleges in elsewhere in North India or other parts of the sun, or we are called to minister somewhere else, you know, we put you know, a, a cloth or a, a shawl or a dupatta on our head so that that will not become a hindrance for people. So people say, hey, look at this lady, you know, as it is, she's so young and you have to listen to her. We don't know what she's going to say. And she has no, you know, godliness, no reverence for God. She's not covering her head. So even when we go to missions uh, um, uh, from APC, we're all asked to not wear, you know, jeans or trousers or, you know, t-shirts but we're all asked to wear salwar kameez that is what you know is the uh, is the culture the lifestyle why because that should not become a hindrance from people to receive the gospel so are you able to understand yes so, so even in our families you know um, uh, we have the right sometimes to speak up to say things that we want to say but if that is going to bring about further 
division and strife, then I might might as well hold what I have to say and say it in a way that is more peaceful and loving so that things don't escalate, things don't, uh, you know, become a problem and a division. And, you know, even if people are shouting down on me or screaming at me and telling me this and that, and they know that they, I know that they have misunderstood me, but I'm holding my peace. I can also shout back at them and tell, hey, don't talk to me like that and things like that. And I'm not here to listen to all of the nonsense that you're speaking. We, we can say all of those things. But to maintain righteousness, peace, and joy in the kingdom of God, kingdom of God does not mean just the church. It also means our family, our home, our neighbors. When our neighbors irritate us and do things that is not right, then how do we respond to them? Do we respond to them in a way that is peaceful, in the right way, you know, with joy in our hearts, with love in our hearts? How are we responding? So we can shout back, we can use our rights and give it back to them good. But, you know, because we belong to the kingdom of light and we are the light in the darkness, you know, we are uh, holding ourselves back and we are exercising righteousness, peace and joy. Able to understand? Okay, just think about another issue, you know, you, young people, uh, you know, they think it's harmless uh, not, you know, to put an arm around, you know, a, a guy putting an arm around a, a girl or hugging them, even when they come to church, you know, giving them a hug. So when you tell the youth, hey, don't do that, you know what they say? You know, uh, sorry if I'm going to be crude or, you know, um, uh, they say, hey, I'm not going to make her pregnant, right? Sorry to be so crude about it, but you know, they say it's so harmless. Nothing is going to be, nothing is wrong in doing it. But we are trying to teach them, hey, this is just a start, but you know, you know, we need to exercise what is right and do what is right. Okay. So as a kingdom person, you are going to pursue things that are higher, that is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, so that you can edify people so that you can promote the kingdom of God and when you do that you're willing to sacrifice your legitimate rights of what you can eat drink what you think you can do and what you are able to do okay um, so um, when we do that you know when we live according to what God wants us to do in his kingdom culture in the kingdom lifestyle you know we get God's approval and uh, we get the approval also of man. That is the kingdom of God. Okay. Another characteristic of the kingdom of God is, uh, you know, power and authority and dominion. Okay. Now we'll talk more about this in, in the next chapter, but uh, in another chapter, sorry. But just like to mention here that the kingdom that is in us is a kingdom that supersedes everything around us. Amen. Okay. I'll say that again. You know, the kingdom that is in us is a kingdom that supersedes everything around us. Amen? Okay? So the kingdom of God is in us and the king of the kingdom has vested in our life as a believer. Okay? He has vested in uh, uh, authority into our lives as a believer. He has vested his power in us. Okay? And wherever we go, the kingdom will be there we are carriers of the kingdom okay so when you step into an unpleasant uh, a difficult situation a bad situation you need to remember that who is there inside you the king and the kingdom is inside you okay so when the king and the kingdom is inside you that means you carry the king's power and the authority you have the potential you have the power you have the authority to dominate the situation you have the potential to dominate the circumstances that is around you and to turn it around according to what god wills and plans amen isn't that powerful right so you can change situations in your workplace in your family in your extended family situations in your neighborhood because you have the potential to dominate situations you have the potential to dominate the circumstances okay so if you will live and allow the kingdom of god that is in you to come out and administer that kingdom power that kingdom authority then you will experience his power dominate your situation. Amen?
Okay, so this is the kingdom because this kingdom is a kingdom of power, it's a kingdom of authority and dominion. So if things are not happening well in your workplace, you have the kingdom power and authority and you can dominate that situation. If things are not happening, it's not going well in your marriage, you have the kingdom of God within you, the kingdom authority and the power. If things are not going well in your children's life, you have they and you have the kingdom authority and the power to dominate the situations and the circumstances. If you have financial crisis, if you have any other health situations in your family, repeated cycles of uh, um, health um, issues that are there, remember that you have the kingdom of God in you. And the kingdom of God in you has the power and the authority to dominate your circumstances and your situation. Some of you come from tribal groups, some of you come from uh, small cities, towns, villages. You have the kingdom potential to dominate the circumstances around you. Amen? Can you hear a louder amen? amen. Yes. So this kingdom is a kingdom of uh, authority, power and dominion. Okay? Uh, because Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 19 and 20. Can somebody read that, please? 1 Corinthians chapter 4, 19 and 20. We read this yesterday, I think. But I will come to you shortly, if the Lord wills, and I will know not the word of those who are puffed up, but the power the, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Amen. So Paul is saying that when I come among you, I don't want to come, I, I don't want to know about words, for the kingdom is not, he says, um, yeah, the, uh, when I come to you, I don't want to come just with words, but I, because the kingdom is, of God is not about just words, but it is about power. Amen. So he says that this kingdom that I'm talking about is not a, just a kingdom of nice words that I can talk about, but it's a kingdom that comes with power and the words that go forth, go forth with such power and authority of the king that it will destroy every work of the devil. It, it dominates every forces of darkness. It undoes every sickness and disease. And that is a kingdom or that is a kind of kingdom of God that I am talking about. So that is what Paul is saying. So if Paul is saying, I'm not just coming with words, but I'm coming with words that of power that dominates the powers of darkness, that dominates the demonic forces, the, the, the forces of darkness, the demonic realm, the demonic world. Okay, it is a power that will undo every form of uh, sickness and disease, every form of idolatry, every form of, um, um, of uh, perversiveness, wickedness that is there, every form of um, wrong, life, immoral lifestyles that is there. And he says, that is the kingdom of God. So I don't know if you're able to see this, the power that is there. So when you pray for your kingdom that God has put you in, whatever is your realm of influence, when you pray, you have the power and the authority in you to change things, to transform things. Amen? Yes? Whether it is sickness, forces of darkness, temptation, whatever it is, we have that power and the authority. Like in our uh, present context, in our nation, in our city, we see a lot of um, forces of, um, the, you know, adultery, there's immorality, there's pornography so prevalent in, in, in Bangalore City, there's suicide cases that are so high, and also we are seeing a lot of rape cases. Okay, so as people belonging to the kingdom of God, we have that power and authority to speak against these forces, these demonic forces. These are all not from the kingdom of God. These are from the demonic realm. Okay, and they are devastating people's lives. And we just cannot say so sad or, you know, this is really bad what is happening. You know, we may need to keep ourselves uh, safe. We need to keep our children safe. Yes, that is important. But we also have the authority and the power to speak against these forces of darkness, to pray against those things. God is going to hold us uh, accountable because he has vested in us kingdom 
authority. He has vested in us kingdom, dominion, and power. And we need to use that kingdom authority and that kingdom power. Amen? And so I hope that things are going to change because all of us are going to rise up to do what we are learning in the kingdom of God. Okay? So... Um, so Paul is saying that, you know, when this kingdom comes, it will totally remove every force of darkness. So has the kingdom come? Has the kingdom of God come? Yes, it's already come, right? It's already here for so many centuries. But we are not seeing any change because the people belonging to the kingdom of God, they don't know what is their kingdom authority and power and dominion, how to exercise it and how to use it okay so when jesus was among the people he said you know if by the spirit of god i cast out devils or if the spirit of god i cast out demons then the kingdom of god has come to you okay so this kingdom you know when it comes it will drive out every demonic forces amen so there is should not be any fear of any demonic forces sometimes we think you know all this is happening in my family this is happening in my marriage this is happening among my children the sickness and disease this constant uh, you know financial problems all this is happening because of the demonic force hey the demonic force has no power see there's no power because on the cross jesus has already nullified every force of Darkness. This is, he is paralyzed. He has no power. He has no authority. It's only that we are living in fear of him and giving him all that power and authority that he ha does not have. He is very happy about it. But we need to rise up to know what kingdom authority and power that God has given to us and we need to exercise that. Okay. So look at what uh, 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 Matthew chapter, okay, we just, I just said that, but you can read Matthew chapter 12 verse 28. Can somebody read that please? Matthew 12, 28. Okay, it's okay. It says, just I already have mentioned it. It says, by the Spirit of God, I drive out demons and the kingdom of God has come upon you. Okay, so when Jesus sent his disciples, he said, go preach. Preach what? what when you preach, what should you say? Say that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, and say that the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God is at hand. And what should you do? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead and cast out devils, okay? So that is the kind of the kingdom that we are talking about, a kingdom that is not just with words, but with power. So when, when you're preaching and teaching, you're also healing the sick, cleansing the lepers, raising the dead, casting out devils, amen? So this should be part of our kingdom lifestyle so that when you go out, we are carrying that kingdom of God, that kingdom of God, authority, power, and dominion that is in you. Okay, I was just reminded of one small incident which I heard from, you know, uh, uh, one pastor who I, his sermons I follow and listen to and I greatly admire this great man of God and his church is mighty and moving in the supernatural. So one day, um, you know, um, uh, somebody came to this pastor and said that they were visiting their church and they said they wanted to be part of their mall outreach. So the pastor thought and he said, uh, we sorry, we don't have any mall outreach. Uh, he said, but no, you know, uh, those people who go to the malls and those people who heal people, minister to them, you know, who share words of wisdom and knowledge and prophesy that people's life are transformed. So I want to go along with that team and I want to do, uh, you know, um, a ministry in the malls. So then uh, the pastor thought and he said, we don't have any ministry that is specifically you know, working uh, or going to the malls. But he said, but you know, when our members, all of our members just go grocery shopping or they just go to shop and buy something and they go to the malls, you know, they just see people there and then they just step in, they just heal, they just minister, they just give word of wisdom, knowledge, whatever, and people are delivered, healed, set free. And, you know, they're brought into their divine destiny and purpose that God has for them okay so when i was listening to that i was like wow what is the culture of this church what is the culture and the lifestyle of this church that hey wherever you go you're carriers of the kingdom of 
God, whether you're going to the mall or you're going to grocery shopping or you're going to the park and walking, you know, or you're just going to uh, an ice cream parlor or you're going to the donut store just to pick up a donut, wherever the kingdom of God is going with you. And when the kingdom of God is going with you, you are seeing people, you are interacting people who are living in darkness and you can be salt and like just imagine you step into that donut shop you see somebody somebody who's going to eat the last donut and they're going to die because they love donuts i'm just i'm just making up a scenario sorry if it sounds funny i mean it shouldn't sound funny but you know they're just 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 thinking of ending their lives okay and you go in there and you step in and the spirit of god is saying hey this person is going to you know uh, take their life in, in just a couple of days and you go and minister to them and they're shocked. How do you know? See? And you say, God told me this. God loves you. Just imagine what things that you can do. When you go to the mall, there's so many people who are coming broken hearted. Some of them would also be thinking of going to the top floor and jumping off from there. You never know. Right? So you can just, you know, Share God's love with them. The kingdom of God that is in you, you can extend it to them. Are you able to understand what I'm saying? And you can see what we are carriers of, what God has vested in us, what he has given to us, and how we need to um, use it. Okay. So we see that in this people, in this church, there's a church that is here in this world. You know, they wherever they go, they just carry the kingdom of God. So we need to be aware that the kingdom of God is in us and we need to go know that wherever we go, we release the kingdom of God in us. Okay. Another important aspect of the kingdom lifestyle is endurance and suffering. Now, I know that Jesus said we belong to the kingdom that is not of this world. And so many people think that because we belong to the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven, there is no stress there. There is no pressure there. There is no dead ends to meet, deadlines to meet, assignments to do, you know, um, you know, uh, exams or tests or in job related. You know, you don't have deadlines to submit things. But we live in this kingdom as well, right? And there we will feel pressure. We will go through stressful situations. We will be accused. We will face persecution. But, you know, we have to endure that because we're living here on this earth. And it's part of kingdom living, okay? Sometimes we get this wrong idea that, you know, because we are part of the kingdom of God, we are kids of the kingdom. Kids of the king. We are children of the king. Yes, we are sons and daughters of the king. And we tend to think that everything is going to be very, very easy. Anytime we want, just press the grace button. Grace is there and we go on in life. Okay. But God, yes, he did say that we are his children, that we are his sons and daughters. But he did not say that we are not going to suffer. He did not say that we are not going to uh, have persecution. He did not say that we are not going to have any difficulties. He did not say that we are not going to face any problems. He said that, but he said you need to have endurance. Okay? So, yes, we are sons and daughters of the kingdom, but we are living in a foreign territory right now. Okay, we are here on this earth. And so because of that, we will need a lot of endurance. Okay, a lot of perseverance to go through some adverse situations, circumstances. Sometimes those situations will not be those situations that you created for yourself. It will be some things that people created for you. And it's you will be saying like, God, why am I in this? I thought the kingdom of God is peaceful, joy, you know, uh, and everything else. But... The kingdom of God is a lifestyle where we need to go through suffering and persecution. We need to persevere. We need to endure. And we need to be willing to go through those hard times. Yes, you have a question, Akil? Biblically, how do we differentiate between suffering and long suffering? Uh, long suffering, when you're talking about in the context of God, God is long suffering. Yes, long suffering means what? God is long suffering means he's patient with us. He's bearing with us, with our sins. He's just patient till we come to a place where we'll accept him. Okay, forbearance, patience. But suffering is, you know, when we go through different suffering and hardship because we live in this world. Okay, uh, we'll stop here and we'll meet after the break. Thank you.